Have you ever pondered why desert regions like certain parts of China and Dubai are so parched, so devoid of rain? It's a question that's puzzled many for centuries. Imagine vast stretches of land, sun-baked and windswept, where the rain rarely visits. It's a stark contrast to the lush, rain-soaked landscapes we're accustomed to in other parts of the world. Let's delve a little deeper into this intriguing puzzle. The scarcity of rain in these desert regions owes largely to their climatic patterns. They're characterized by high pressure systems that deter cloud formation, which is a prerequisite for rainfall. The air is typically dry with minimal moisture, making it inhospitable for cloud formation. This lack of rain coupled with the intense heat makes these areas some of the harshest places to live. The land is arid, the vegetation sparse, and water, that essential elixir of life, is a scarce commodity. Survival, let alone thriving in such regions, poses a considerable challenge. But what if I told you there's a way to coax the clouds to release their precious cargo? A way to make it rain even in these parched landscapes? Sounds like a fairy tale, doesn't it? But it's not. It's a scientific method, a marvel of human ingenuity that has the potential to transform these dry, barren lands into fertile, life-sustaining environments. This method is called cloud seeding. It's a process where certain substances are introduced into the clouds to stimulate rainfall. The idea is to increase the amount of precipitation, to turn the elusive rain into a more regular visitor in these desert regions. So the next time you find yourself wondering why it doesn't rain much in parts of China or Dubai, Remember this, it's not just about the climate, it's also about the science and the potential for transformation. It's about the possibility of turning the arid into the fertile, the parched into the lush, the inhospitable into the habitable. Intriguingly, science has a solution, a method known as cloud seeding. So, what is this cloud seeding that we speak of? Well, let's delve into the heart of it. Picture a cloud as a colossal sponge brimming with moisture. Now, imagine if we could squeeze that sponge to release the water. That, in essence, is what cloud seeding aims to achieve. Cloud seeding is a type of weather modification where scientists introduce substances into the atmosphere to stimulate rain or snowfall. These substances, known as cloud seeds, are typically composed of silver iodide or liquid propane. They function as a catalyst encouraging the tiny water droplets in the cloud to condense and coalesce into larger droplets, heavy enough to fall as precipitation. There are two primary types of cloud seeding, static and dynamic. Static cloud seeding involves injecting cloud seeds into a cloud to foster the growth of ice particles. This method is often used in colder climates where the aim is to stimulate snowfall. On the other hand, dynamic cloud seeding requires a bit more finesse. It involves targeting specific areas of a cloud to stimulate updrafts, which encourage the formation of raindrops. This method is typically used in warmer climates where the goal is to produce rain. The science behind cloud seeding is truly fascinating. It's based on the principles of cloud physics and meteorology. In a nutshell, it's about creating the right conditions for precipitation to occur. This includes ensuring the presence of sufficient moisture, the right atmospheric temperature and the appropriate cloud seeds. In recent years, cloud seeding has become a glimmer of hope for regions plagued by drought. It's seen as a potential solution to water scarcity, a growing problem in many parts of the world. In fact, countries like China and Dubai have been investing heavily in cloud seeding technology with promising results. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Cloud seeding is a complex process and still a subject of ongoing research. There are questions about its effectiveness, potential side effects and ethical implications. Remarkably, cloud seeding has the potential to convert arid lands into thriving habitats. But as with all powerful tools, it must be used wisely and responsibly. So join us as we continue this journey exploring the science, real-world applications and impact of cloud seeding. Now let's delve deeper into the science behind cloud seeding. Cloud seeding is a thrilling scientific endeavor that revolves around two key players, silver iodide and liquid propane. These substances are the unsung heroes in our quest for rain, and here's how they work their magic. 
At the heart of cloud seeding is the concept of nucleation. This is a process where a small particle, known as a nucleus, triggers the formation of a larger structure. In the case of cloud seeding, the nuclei are silver iodide or liquid propane particles. Silver iodide is the star of the show in most cloud seeding operations. Its molecular structure is similar to that of ice, making it an ideal candidate for nucleation. When silver iodide is introduced into a cloud, it provides a surface for the supercooled water droplets to freeze upon. These frozen droplets then absorb more water, increasing in size until they are heavy enough to fall to the ground as rain. Now what about liquid propane? This substance plays a different but equally important role in cloud seeding. When released into the atmosphere, liquid propane quickly vaporizes, causing the surrounding air to cool. This sudden drop in temperature forces the moisture in the air to condense, forming clouds that can then be seeded with silver iodide. So it's a two-step dance. First we create the clouds with liquid propane and then we seed them with silver iodide. This one-two punch is a powerful tool in the fight against drought. However, it's not as simple as it sounds. The timing, location and amount of seeding agents used all have to be meticulously calculated. Get it wrong, and you could end up with a drizzle instead of a downpour, or worse, no rain at all. That said, when done right, cloud seeding can produce impressive results. It's a testament to human ingenuity, a shining example of how we can harness the power of science to manipulate the natural world to our advantage. Indeed, the science behind cloud seeding is as fascinating as it is complex. But where in the world is cloud seeding actually being used? Let's take a journey to the Far East, to the vast expanse of China, a country known for its technological advancements and its ability to adapt to the changing climate. China has been using cloud seeding extensively to combat water scarcity and to ensure adequate rainfall for its agricultural lands. The country's cloud seeding efforts were highlighted during the 2008 Beijing Olympics when they used the technology to ensure clear skies for the opening ceremony. Quite the spectacle, wasn't it? But it's not all smooth sailing. China's usage of cloud seeding has raised several concerns, such as the potential for ecological imbalance. The unprecedented manipulation of nature's course does make one ponder about the long-term effects, doesn't it? Next, we jet off to the Middle East, to the city of gold, Dubai. Known for its scorching temperatures and arid climate, rain is a scarce commodity here. To tackle this, Dubai has turned to cloud seeding. In recent years, they have seen success in inducing rainfall, turning the otherwise dry and parched landscapes into somewhat lush green spaces. A welcome sight in the desert indeed. However, Dubai's cloud seeding efforts have had their fair share of challenges. The unpredictability of weather patterns and the potential for flooding are some of the hurdles they face. But, as they say, where there's a will, there's a way. So, from the paddy fields in China to the sand dunes in Dubai, cloud seeding is being used as a tool to combat climate change and water scarcity. It's a testament to human ingenuity and the lengths we will go to ensure our survival. Yet as we delve deeper into this brave new world of weather modification, we must tread carefully. We must consider the potential consequences and the ethical implications of our actions. After all, we are meddling with Mother Nature herself. Cloud seeding, as we see, holds immense potential, but it is not without its challenges. So, what impact does cloud seeding have on our world? This is the question we find ourselves grappling with as we delve into the far-reaching consequences of this weather-modifying technology. Cloud seeding, as we've learned, is a powerful tool that can literally make it rain. But what does that mean for us and our planet? Let's start with the positives. One of the most significant benefits is the potential to increase water supply in areas that desperately need it. Imagine regions plagued by drought, their lands parched and rivers running dry. With cloud seeding, these areas could see a significant boost in their water reserves, providing much needed relief. This increased water supply doesn't just quench thirst, it's a boon for agriculture as well. Farmers in arid regions could see a turnaround in their fortunes with the ability to grow crops in places that were once considered barren. This could mean a more abundant food supply and a stronger economy in these regions. But like any powerful tool, cloud seeding has its potential downsides. One of these is ecological imbalance. 
Nature, in its infinite wisdom, has a way of maintaining balance. When we introduce artificial rain, we're tinkering with this delicate equilibrium. This could lead to unforeseen consequences, such as an increase in pests or a shift in local flora and fauna. Another potential risk is over-reliance. If regions start depending on cloud seeding for their water supply, what happens when the technology fails or is unavailable? It's a question that needs careful consideration. It's also worth noting that while cloud seeding can increase rainfall, it doesn't create water. The water has to come from somewhere. And that somewhere is often other regions that could be deprived of their own rainfall. So where does this leave us? It's clear that cloud seeding could be a game changer, but it's important to balance its benefits with its potential risks. As we continue to explore and refine this technology, we must strive to use it responsibly, considering not just the immediate benefits, but the long-term impact on our world.